Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we are excited to welcome a remarkable guest, Danny Waxman, the founder and creator of Recall Q. Welcome, Danny. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. So, Danny, let's start a little bit with your background and where the concept for Recall Q came from. Sure. Um, so, I've been involved in technology uh, at various stages throughout my career, um, from IT to software projects. Um, and for the last uh, 17 years or so, I really have been serving as a product manager at various startups. I live in Israel. and. I've been working in various uh, startups, high-tech companies here in Israel as a product manager. Um, about four or five years ago, uh, a story that probably anyone listening to this podcast can, can relate to or tell themselves, we, we started to notice um, some changes in my mother-in-law, changes with her, uh, with her memory, with her ability to see what day of the week it was, uh, we started getting phone calls uh, at all hours of the day, one hour after the other, um, and we realized that something was going on. Um, and we had been through um, a couple of years of caring for my father-in-law, who uh, had been living with dementia and had unfortunately passed away shortly before this time. And we, although the signs were different, we quickly realized that my mother-in-law also was showing signs of early stage dementia. Um, we realized that, she that the signs that she was having were classic stage uh, of, of early stage dementia uh, and what I later to be, understand to be called time disorientation. Um, having been in technology and appreciating the value of technology, I looked to see what solutions were available or what products were available to help with this phenomenon. And I quickly came across something called a dementia day clock, which seemed to have been a very popular uh, tool or product. It's available on Amazon. Uh, and I read a numerous studies that showed the effectiveness of a dementia day clock in helping uh, with time disorientation. Um, but it seemed a little strange to me that we, I would go out and buy a physical clock, which is a screen that sits in her house, and that's all it would do. And that kind of piqued my interest uh, to see if something else can come of it. And I decided to develop this application, Recall Q, which at its core is a dementia day clock, uh, but has additional features like being able to send messages to it, send reminders, share photos, uh, set alarms. Uh, later, I added additional features like music and two-way video chat and really make that dementia day clock not just a static device that sits in the house and does one thing, but really gets everyone involved and gets every, gives everyone the ability to become uh, great caregivers from anywhere. Um, I, I myself live in Israel. We have additional siblings here in Israel, but we also have family in New York. Uh, and we wanted everyone to be able to participate in the care. And that's really where the idea came from. Okay. So like many products, Recall Q is probably best geared towards certain stages of dementia. What has been your experience with who would most benefit from it? Does it matter on the stages or is there certain criteria that would best suit the users? Yeah. So this was actually really surprising to me in that, I had assumed, and when I built this for our family, uh, that it would be good for a very short amount of time, that time disorientation and really dealing with that. Um, but what I found was that as, as my mother-in-law's um, progressed and showed additional signs of, of dementia and different stages, 
And at this time, I also released it to the public, the app, and was getting feedback from users. I started adding, adding additional features and found that I was really able to find a certain level of usage for various stages. So as you know, someone progresses through those seven stages of dementia uh, that, that we talk about, different pieces of the application become applicable to different people. Uh, and it may be at first the reminders and later, and certainly during the pandemic, the two-way video chat or the music just as a calming, uh, you know, a calming uh, feature. Uh, it really evolved into much more than what I had in mind originally. Sure. And because you have such a vast experience and expertise in, you know, technology and helping with startups, did you find any different unique challenges or obstacles facing you developing a product for, you know, families with loved ones with dementia than you would say just an app for, you know, everyday use for non-dementia related issues? Or what was the similarities and what were the differences? Yeah. So, the similarity the similarities were understanding who your target audience is um and i think that's like the core that any product manager will, manager will tell you is understand the pain point and understand how the product as it will be used solves that pain point the biggest challenge or the biggest difference for me was that in this case it was very difficult to see an interview, if you will, the, the prime user who is the person living with dementia. And in, I had the experience and I had, um, you know, my professional career was all about getting people to use a product. And in this case, um, the day clock itself is really meant to be there as a, as a passive, uh, as a passive tool, a passive app that the person with dementia sees benefits from, but ideally has very little interaction with because that can cause confusion. Uh, they may not understand what they need to do. Uh, its prime goal is to be there, provide the information, provide the benefit, but be passive. On the, on the other hand, there is a companion app and it's really the solution, if you will, is made up of two apps. There's the, the Recall Q day, day Clock app, which sits on a, a tablet and the Recall Q Connect app, which is meant for the family members and caregivers. Okay. And there, that was much more of a traditional uh, product management uh, where I had, you know, I was, I was able to speak to the users there and get their feedback, what they want. I received tons of feedback uh, from the users and, and really try to address and implement, uh, you know, the requests that do come in. So it was kind of uh, one solution, two different problems that I needed to address. Now, this is available on all platforms like the iTunes or Apple Store, Google Play. If somebody is using like an Alexa, um, for instance, uh, is it also compatible with Alexa as well? Right. So it's not compatible with Alexa per se, but uh, literally as of this past week, it is available. The Day Clock app is available on the Amazon App Store as well, So, which is, a, which is great because Amazon puts out uh, some really good tablets. Uh, at very low cost. So any of the Fire, uh, the Fire HD, I believe they're called, line of tablets, uh, those run, you know, anywhere from sixty dollars to one hundred dollars, very low cost, and it's now available. The Day Clock app is available um, for Wonderful. that on Amazon as well. Um, on the Connect side, it's available with on on either Google or iOS. Okay, fantastic. Well, I know. You've touched on this uh, with your experiences with your loved ones with dementia, but, you know, professionally, we see so many families day in and day out who are, you know, on this journey with their loved ones with dementia and whatever form of dementia it may be, whether it's frontal, temporal, Lewy body, Alzheimer's being, of course, the most common, and it affects everybody differently. You know, the old saying goes, when you've seen one person with dementia, you literally have just seen that one person with dementia. And with you developing this tremendous resource for families and their loved ones with Recall Q, I'm sure you get a lot of feedback, a lot of requests, a lot of questions or suggestions rather. How do you decide which to implement and where to draw the line at? How do you make those decisions? That's got to be awfully difficult, I would assume. Yeah, so... Early on, I had to draw that line, as you say, somewhere. And 
what I came up with was really um, three guiding principles of where I want or what I want this app to do. Uh, the first and foremost is to provide value and benefit to the person living with dementia. So, you know, the, the day clock, the reminders, that's the, you know, the, the core value for me. That's number one. Number two is to provide peace of mind to the family members and caregivers. We live in a world today where we cannot be there 24-7. Um, even, even if there is a full-time caregiver, uh, professional caregiver um, who's living with a loved one living with dementia, you want to be there. There's a, there's a certain sense of, uh, of guilt and a certain sense of desire to help a parent, um, a relative, a sibling, whoever it is. So number two is to be able to provide tools that provide peace of mind and help them be a great caregiver from anywhere, not have to be on site. And third is to provide a tool that allows intergenerational communication. When I saw my kids picking up the Connect app and sending photos and say, you know, sharing their day with my mother-in-law, I realized that this was helping solve a gap in communication, you know, skipping a generation. Um, so that was super important for me as well. Uh, so really, I look at every feature request that comes in and it has to fit one of those three categories. Um, you know, again, providing the core benefit to the person living with dementia, providing peace of mind to the family members or caregivers, or supporting that intergenerational. If it fits in one of those three, great. Um, you know, I've had requests come in for things like um, expense sharing and, you know, between siblings, because this is really a family app, multiple people use it. So I, I do think about those and I do, you know, jot them down, but they're not my primary goal because it doesn't, to me, that doesn't fit into one of those three directly. Right. Um, but the video chat did, the music did, um, there's motion detection built in. So I use the, the front facing camera of the tablet on the day clock to sense motion so that, you know, did mom get up this morning? Is she moving about? Uh, is she up in the middle of the night when she should not be? So you could see the motion history there. So that was um, something that I was, you know, very excited to, to give over to the family members. Again, who can't be there, but want to know what's going on. And I think that's fascinating because, you know, I think it's so important that, you know, being a developer like yourself, opening up those lines of communication with the end users, giving them a voice to give feedback, because ultimately that will only help to serve their loved ones and, you know, other users of Recall Q, where a lot of times people feel like, you know, I'll, I'll give my suggestion or I'll put in my recommendation and it just kind of falls on deaf ears, you know, but, you know, you're you're accessible and you're wanting that feedback, I'm assuming, to help continue to make it as good of a product as it can be. A hundred percent, because, again, as you said, everybody experiences this differently. So I, I'm coming from my experience and I built the product based on my own experiences and needs, but that in no way addresses everyone else's needs. And, and, you know, as long as I can do that, as long as I can address those needs, I want that feedback and be able to expand on the product, um, keeping it simple to use, keeping it hands off as much as possible on the day clock side, but still providing value in as many ways as I can. That's just a question that came up when you mentioned the hands off on the day clock side. When you have somebody that might like to fidget or touch or you know they're seeing things on the screen when the app is running and open is there kind of a um, a safety valve if you will so that they can't accidentally lock it out or close it down to a certain extent okay there is um the the app is you can lock the app so that touching the screen won't bring up the menu the various menus that a lot of times come up on a tablet on android on ipad um I am working to, to make that even stronger so that even pushing the home button won't do that. Um, but today it's locking the screen so that the app is always, is always stays up. And also, you know, when the app is open, it'll, it does override, for example, um, putting the screen to sleep so that the screen will always be on. Um, and, and, you know, it's important for me to say also that it's really meant to be dedicated for this purpose. Uh, it's not you're not buying a tablet that will be used for recall queue and for, you know, playing games or, or other things. It's really meant to be dedicated. I, I recommend people also 
Amazon has a little stand that they sell, a nice little stand for uh, tablets that makes it more like a picture frame so that it gives a sense of, okay, this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be touched. Wonderful. Now you have this remarkable resource and tool for these families and for their loved ones. Have you been approached by other dementia resources or organizations, or is there a, uh, an opportunity to collaborate with any of those if you're not already? Yeah. So first of all, I, I come from the tech background, not a marketing background. And for a while, I kind of, I would be the first to say that I failed at make at getting word out. Uh, I think recently I'm doing a better job at that and tapping into some of those resources. I found that, um, so there are so many people in this space and everyone really wants to help each other. Yeah. Um, there, there's a, it's amazing. And again, I've been in many companies and it's always competitive. We're not going to talk to them because what if they take that idea? It's the complete opposite. And it's, it's amazing to see, you know, and I get messages from people, um, you know, uh, on LinkedIn all the time. And there are some great partnership um, partnerships happening right now, which, uh, you know, hopefully will, uh, will come out very soon and collaboration with other uh with other service providers if you will in this space so uh, that's it's wonderful really refreshing and really great to see are there any you'd like to share with us today <laughs> too a little too early for that. okay all right well we'll have to have you back and then you can share the news <laughs> so being an outsider though from the tech industry totally removed from healthcare, senior care age-related issues what were some of the challenges you faced as I'd say, quote unquote, an outsider entering into the field? Yeah. So I think first of all is validating myself okay. um, and showing that, you know, I, I don't have the degree in gerontology. I don't have you know the experience in, in memory care divisions, but that, but that the life experience that I bring is valuable and, and worth, uh, you know, worth something in this industry. Um, and I think that, you know, there, there are thousands of people using this app today, and that says something, and people see sure. the value there. Also, I think people who, once they see it and try it, they see how simple it is to use and the value that it provides very quickly. It's not something that takes, you know, week, days or weeks or months to understand the value. It's it's very quick to understand. An immediate benefit. Yeah, Absolutely. It's an immediate benefit. Um you know, I think for myself, finding the right people to talk to and finding the right groups um, and and the the thought leaders in the industry was something I was uh, you know failed at at first, but I think doing a much better job at now. Wonderful. Now, living in Israel as you do, and now you did say you you know you used to live in New York and then you moved there about twenty years ago. Are there different challenges being outside of the United States and having a product you're trying to introduce to the country or how, how does that work? Yeah. So actually the United States is one market, but I found, and I was always used to working in the U S market, but right. it really has become a global product. Um, certain countries, I was surprised, you know, Australia very quickly became very popular and a lot of users from Australia. Then as I researched, I, I found out and understood that the, you know, the, the Australian government does a great job at um, advocating services and the services available for dementia care and just people talk about it much more openly there. Yes. Um, so it's, I think, I think very advanced. So I, I shouldn't have been surprised. Um, some of the European countries and, and, and Scandinavian countries. Um, so it had become very popular during Germany, uh, there's, there's a lot of users for. So, you know, what, what sometimes is seen as a disadvantage where your business or your service is located far away from your market, you know, we think the US, Israel has been a really good place because it's very central and uh, it allows me different time zones to talk to different people, talk to customers, respond to customers, get feedback, um, and really uh, it, it's worked out well. And that's tremendous. And I, I would like to touch on the Australia. Um, uh, discussion again real briefly. We've had several of the um, foremost leaders on dementia care and education from Australia on the show, and they are doing just tremendous cutting edge, you know, state of the art research and implementa implementation of that research in Australia. And it's, you know, it's really remarkable what Australia is doing as far as dementia education 
and the um, you know forefront of the dementia industry. It is remarkable. So I'm not surprised to hear you say that. Now, how did the COVID did the COVID pandemic play into this? Since it is an app, and you're not necessarily doing you know in person meetings and you know sales necessarily. How did COVID play into your marketing and you know the app overall? So I it forced me very quickly to introduce a feature that I had wanted, which is the the video chat. And that was a real blessing for a lot of people um, who were not able, you know, the idea behind the app is being a great caregiver from, from anywhere and COVID kind of forced that on, on us. Um, so the ability to initiate a call and, you know, just be able to, to see your loved one there is a, a real, real sense of, uh, uh, you know, of peace of mind. Right. Uh, even the, and that was actually another thing. Originally the, the feature I call check-in uh, was that did require the the person living with dementia to click a button to accept the call. Uh, I was very nervous about privacy issues at right. first, and I didn't want it to be auto answer. I got a ton of feedback saying, "Great feature, we need it to be auto answer." Uh, <laughs> and you know that's one of those things that I judged and I understood that I was coming from a certain perspective, and and, and you know so now the app flashes a warning reminding you to please be mindful of your loved one's uh, privacy, that this will be an auto answer, that you have the ability to set it to an auto answer call. It's not by default auto answer. Uh, but that was huge also during, during the pandemic, to be able to pick up the app and just start a conversation and, and you know see them in front of you. It gave real peace of mind. I was going to say, I, I can only imagine, I know the families that we serve and help uh, throughout the pandemic they didn't have the benefit of being able to go see mom or, you know, stop in on dad and, you know, but yet our staff were because we were, you know, labeled as uh, designated as essential workers. So a lot of times that person with dementia that we were serving or even a very elderly person or any number of issues, they may not have had the wherewithal to use their cell phone or they may not even have had a cell phone to have that FaceTime or that Zoom call or whatnot. So the staff were initiating that call using their own phones, and it just made a world of difference, not only for the family, but also for the person that we were helping to serve and care for. Um, so I think that was just a remarkable uh, option that you you know made available. And like you said, very timely. You know, it, it kind of helped spur it along for you. So where where do you see Recall Queue going in the future? And do you have any other exciting new resources that you're working on that you can share with us? Um, yeah, so I think uh, uh, the next venture is I've been focused on what's uh, you know it's called B 2 C, which is working directly with uh, people, care, family members, really caring for loved ones. Um, and the next venture is really working with um, facilities as well, assisted living facilities, uh, long term care facilities, memory care units. Um, where you know we're talking to and and people are excited about bringing this in and providing uh, another tool for family members uh, as well as the facility themselves to communicate um, you know with with the pa with patients and with people uh, in the facilities. Uh, so that's I think the next the next venture. <laughs> I, I and I could see that you know especially facilities that have a memory care wing or unit. Um, being able to offer that to families, I think would be tremendous, you know, especially with the video calls and then, you know, the sharing of the photos, there's so much benefit that as you may have found out, as you were entering into this field, people don't realize the benefit and the importance of that stimulation, not only through a, a video call or just an audio call, but also, you know, seeing those photos and just having that stimulation, so that, like you said, it's not just a static clock that you're looking at. And that's what makes Recall Q, you know, so phenomenal and tremendous for this because, you know, you're you're giving them the importance of the day, time and, you know, um, uh, you know, calendar, if you will. But then you're also adding in all these other features that most people aren't really thinking about when they're looking into resources for their loved ones with dementia and it plays a vital role and it makes a huge difference in their day and their week and their month having that interaction and you know just having the the ability to feel connected even though you may not necessarily be physically connected absolutely 100 percent. 
Um, Danny, did you want to do a screen share and show us any of the features? Sure. I'll just do a quick run through of it. And, sure. Uh, I think that'd be great. There's also uh, on the YouTube channel, there's more in depth because there are a lot of features, but I'm not going to run through everything. No, that's just fine. And I know you were, <laughs> yeah, well, and we're going to have um, all the links to Recall Q as well as when our interview is concluded here, we'll have a video that you provided us of Recall Q as well as all the links to your YouTube channel and all the social platforms. And we really encourage our viewers and listeners who may have a loved one with dementia to go get Recall Q because I think it will provide a tremendous benefit for their loved ones and for themselves and the family. Okay, so what you see on my screen now are the two apps. Um, this one here is the Day Clock itself, and this is the Connect app uh, that's used by the family members and caregivers. And this is just being mirrored from actual devices that I have here. So I'm going to be using my phone to kind of uh, send the message. So there's four basic functions right now on the bottom, the feed, music, check-in, which is the video chat, and, and documents. So feed allows you to send instant messages, share photos, schedule reminders. So that could be a birthday. It could be medication reminders. Uh, someone living at home, we, um, you know, today is recycling day. Remember to take out the recycling. Um, and set alarms. So I have some here pre, uh, pre-configured, so I'll just send those along. Okay, so we just uh, tapped in and now we're sharing this. Hi, Dad, we'll be here at 2 p.m. to pick you up. So what you see here is actually, this is, and this is an addition made by a request of users. They wanted to attach audio notes as well. Okay. So in this particular case, um, you know, the, the message can autoplay and then, you know, the uh, dad can then click play again if he sees that and hear that audio message as well. Um, let's go ahead and stop that. Um, here's some photos, All right? So this is uh, my wife and I enjoying a vacation in the Rockies. Uh, so we're letting mom participate in that and see that. Uh, my granddaughter here having fun in the toy that that, uh, that she bought her. So, and these will, these will flip through like a slideshow with captions, mm -hmm. but always go back to the day clock itself also, so that that key information, that number one benefit is always there as well. And that won't be lost. Um, I have some scheduled items here. So here, you know, on the connect side, you see different things that are scheduled and those will show up at the time they're scheduled, but I could also go into my day clock settings and say, I'd like mom to see a calendar view of what's going on this week, right? So there you have the calendar view. Uh, and, you know, three days might be a little too much. So you could go ahead and change that. And let's just see what's on tap for today. Uh, and you'll see everything that's, that's available today. Um, here's the music. So, you know, I usually uh, will use Queen as my testing, but uh, mom doesn't like Queen. So we're gonna go with uh, Frank Sinatra, which is a popular one. Okay, so now on, on the Connect app, you see that searching and this is using YouTube. So it's searching YouTube for various playlists and I just hit play and it takes a few seconds and that then begins to play on the day clock. Oh, um, that's wonderful. So I don't know if you could hear that in the background now playing. Yeah. Okay. And I can control that and stop that as well. Um, and check-in is the two-way video. That will not work very well on the... Uh, let's try it. You know what? <laughs> I'm just going to click check-in. And you see there's that auto answer box that I was talking about. Okay. But I'm going to click check-in and this should... Right there you go. So right now, oops, I just install this. So this is, you know, mom can answer this or ignore it as long as it's not auto answer. And if I click answer, then it connects and there we are. And wow. I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> so I'm just going to stop. That. I mean, it really, you've really pretty much thought of everything. I. <laughs> um, and this last thing here is documents. So, and this again came from personal need. My, um, my mother-in-law was at home. She fell. The, uh, the emergency services were coming. Um, they got into the house, but the first question was, what's her medical record? Sure. Well, go find that now. You know, who's going to go find that? So this is a way to store different information um, 
remotely. You could create folders, organize it. So I'm just going to go now in and it could be a visiting nurse. It could be a doctor's visit. It could be emergency care and then click, okay, broadcast. And that then sends that uh, medication list to the device. It's read only. They can't print it out. They can't do anything with it. And then when they're done, I just hide that, um, mm -hmm. you know, clicking on that I in the, in the upper left-hand corner there. Um, so, you know, it's feature, feature rich, but simple to use. Um, it's very user friendly. And you could also choose what to show if you don't want to show the time, the date or the time of day or shut off that agenda view, uh, but show weather. So, you know, here I am in Israel, so I might, my Tel Aviv weather's there. So then that will show. Um, and you could also, um, it has the motion detection in there. So you see here, you know, I choose the day clock that I want. I, I could have multiple day clocks. I could have one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, one in the living room, monitoring different things. Um, and I could say, okay, show me the motion history here. Uh, we'll see if there is any, is any today. Scroll down. So you see here, starting at 1.45 PM my time, you know, there's been motion here detected. So you could think of this, in the, you know, in the morning between let's say six, and nine o'clock in the morning. I wanna know that mom is up and out of bed and walking around, or is dad walking around at, you know, between two and 3 a.m. when he should be in bed. And this gives you a sense of how much motion is, is happening and at what hours. So Danny, with, with, the, with the motion detection, if you saw, you know, one, two in the morning that, you know, dad got out of bed, and then that was the last motion. Would you have the capability to access the camera to see if he's on the floor? No. So I, again, because of the privacy issues, I don't store the video at all. Um, okay. And um, that is, that's a request that has come through though. So it's one of those that I'm, you know, definitely have on my checklist to consider that. Um, sure. But right now I'm, I'm still thinking through the privacy issues there uh, and, and the security there. So but, but it's definitely a request that has come in. Could you know, you a lot do of people a, have separate cameras set up in the house monitoring. Sure. So Could you do a live check-in though? Yeah, sure. You could, okay. you could, you know, set it to auto answer, check in if there's one gotcha. in the bedroom there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's, you know, if you have a clock in the bedroom, I'll just, you know, there's a sleep mode as well. So you could set what hours and that will automatically dim the clock to the lowest. It'll suppress any audio notifications so that, you know, you're not waking someone up by accident. Uh, and then F, when sleep mode is over, that it comes out of that state, goes to full brightness again, and you can once again, you know, see those uh, those uh, audio note, hear those audio, audio notifications. No, that's fantastic. And for for the viewers and listeners who might be wondering, is this a subscription based service or is it a one time fee or how does how does that structured? Sure. So all the information is on the website as well. Um, but the I'm just going to turn off the weather here because that's. The day clock itself is, is free to use with okay. the information now that you see on the screen. Basically, the ability to control the same information that you'd get on an Amazon day clock, um, except for you could do things like change it to uh, an analog clock if you want. You could change it to uh, light on, you know, light background, and out of the box, it supports a ton of languages. So, you know, if uh, I mentioned the, uh, the the German users, so there's a lot of languages that are supported out there and all that is free. Um, okay. Once you want to start interacting with it, with sending messages and sharing the photos and the video calls, that's a monthly subscription, which is uh, just under $5 a month or $50 for the year. Very reasonable. Okay. That's tremendous. Well, and I, I just think, again, you know, the the benefits that not only the family are getting, but also their loved ones. I mean, that's that's a remarkable value for being able to video chat, send photos, store, you know, healthcare documents, you know, the motion detection, all, all of these things I think are remarkably beneficial, not only to the family, but to their loved one. Yeah, I really wanted to keep it at that price point because, you know, I, as someone coming and seeing the need for this, you don't want price to be the barrier um, right. for providing a service like this. This is remarkable. Well, I, I greatly appreciate your time with us. We're excited to share Recall Queue and 
wonderful, wonderful resource for families and our listeners and viewers who have loved ones dealing with dementia or, you know, maybe just some physical limitations as well, you know, that just need to have that contact and, you know, peace of mind for the family and stimulation and engagement and really connectivity for their loved ones. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Danny. Thank you. You have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, you too. Bye. Hey, I'm just going to give a quick overview here of Recall Q. Uh, on the right, we have the Recall Q day clock. And this is the app that gets installed on any Android or iOS, iPad, tablet. Uh, it's designed to be always on, plugged in, and really dedicated for the purpose of the Recall Q app and day clock. Uh, on the left is the Recall Q Connect app, which is the app that's used to both configure and communicate send messages to the day clock. So when you log into the day clock, uh, the first thing you'll see is the standard view that shows the day of the week, the date, the time of day, excuse me, the time and the time of day. And that'll be early morning, morning, afternoon, early evening, evening, and night. Um, on the Connect app, when you log in, you'll see uh, that nothing is showing other than the day clock right now, and we'll change that in a minute. Uh, and you have your feed screen and some of the other features we'll get into in a minute. But the first thing you should really do is go over to the menu, day clocks, and configure how you want your day clock to look. Now, you could have multiple day clocks set up within your account. So, for example, one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, one in the living room. Uh, and each one can have its own settings. Um, I'm logged in right now to the kitchen one, so let's go into there. And here you could change some of the settings. Now there's a lot of options here. Uh, if you take a look at the YouTube channel, each of these options has its own video that goes into a little bit more depth on what they do, how to configure them, and how to use them. But I'll just run through a few of them here. Uh, some people like a light background, so you can go ahead and change that and it'll reverse and now be black text on white. Um, some people like uh, an analog clock versus a digital clock. Okay, so again, just change that and hit save. Uh, there's about 13 languages supported, so you could choose your language. Choosing the language will also change the date format so that it's correct in that location. I'm just going to go back to U.S. English. Um, some of these others, I'm going to skip for right now. Again, you can go in and see them on uh, on the YouTube channel. Here you can configure which information shows on the day clock. So, for example, if you don't want the time of day, you can remove that, and then it'll just show the day of week, time, and date. For most cases, I do recommend that that's on. And you can add uh, weather as well. So just type in your location, um, located in your Tel Aviv. So save, and it'll pull in the current weather information that gets updated about once every 15 minutes. Okay. Once your clock is configured, you can start sending messages to it. Now there are four types of messages. Click the plus, and you see you have an instant message, you share a photo, schedule a reminder, and set an alarm. An instant message, as its name applies, is just a message that gets sent immediately. So you could have, uh, you know, hi mom, you can attach a photo to it. I'll show you an example in a second. Attach a little voice note that, you can, that uh, mom or dad, your loved one, can click play and hear your voice. Uh, and you can schedule for how long that shows. So once you click save, takes a few seconds and shows up on the day clock. In all, you'll see a history of all the messages that have been sent. Okay, so there's the hi mom that we just sent. Let's uh, go ahead and stop this a second. And I'll show you, here's an example of a message with a photo. Right here, okay. So here's a message with the photo. David's coming to pick you up a little later with a picture of the red suitcase reminding uh, your loved one which bag to pack. Okay, now if I go back, once I hit play, before nothing was showing, now we see what's showing on the day clock here. 
Okay. Um, events, sorry, uh, photos uh, are different than instant messages in that they show full screen. So let me just play here a message of, uh, sorry, a photo, share this photo again of Mia having a great time on her new toy. You could share multiple photos and they'll scroll through like a uh, slideshow. So here's another one having fun in the Rockies. And then these will rotate. And after every couple of rounds, we'll go back to the day clock so that the important information is always there and seen. OK. Um, you can also schedule reminders. Now, reminders are different than instant messages in that they are in the future. And there's our Rockies, um, Rocky Mountain trip, where we did have a great time. Um, so over here, a reminder, it could be something like, uh, remember to take your evening medication. Um, remember that today is recycling day. Um, remember that a visiting nurse is coming today. Any type of uh, reminder that you want. And here you choose the date and time that the reminder will show. And you can repeat this. So for example, if it is um, taking a medication, that might be something you want to repeat every day. So you just type that in, choose every day. Uh, it might be something uh, every week. For example, the recycling. Well, that the recycling comes on Monday and Thursday. So let's just choose it on those days. Um, it could be a birthday. So that's every year um, that, we'll, that we'll put that in. Your all your scheduled reminders will show, and I'm just going to stop these here. All your scheduled reminders will show on the schedule tab of the Connect app. So here I have several scheduled events, right? Here's the recycling day reminder, and here is the evening meds reminder. So today I have two events, tomorrow I only have one. Now, one of the nice options many people like to do is to be able to show their loved one on almost like in a calendar view what reminders they have coming up. So that's just a setting in the day clock. You go into the settings and you have here show agenda. Turn that on and how many days. So let's do three days. And now I'll see all, all the events or reminders that are scheduled for the next three days. Now, for some people that might be a little too much. so. You can say, let me just see what the schedule for today is. And there you have today's schedule. OK. Um, if you're wondering why you're only seeing one here when there are two here, because it will only show reminders that are relevant still for the day. So this one was at 8 AM. It already happened, so it's not going to show. Uh, it's removed from the list. Um, alarms are. Uh, different than also than um, instant messages and in that they show as a pop-up and they let you put a little button there to ask for an acknowledgement. So uh, this is good morning, mom, time to wake up. Well, let's set this for 1110. Hopefully we'll catch this still before that happens. Oh, okay. Nope. We'll do 1111. Okay. Um, you type in the message that you want. You type in the button text that you want to appear, and you'll see the button in literally a minute. Uh, you choose what sound, so let's do a cuckoo tone. Auto hide, if the button is not pressed after how long do you want it to go away automatically? What days to display this? And this is gonna be changing a little bit here, this UI. Uh, and which day clocks to show this alarm on? So let's go ahead and schedule this before 11.11. We'll move on, and then we'll see it come up um, over here, you can see a little summary of the information in the alarm and if this alarm has ever been acknowledged. So because we changed the time, we're changing the settings, this has not been acknowledged. Okay, so mom did not see this yet. Okay, we'll wait for that. Uh, music lets you search for a music playlist. Oh, here we go, 11.11. And here is our alarm. And hopefully you can hear that in the background. OK, so now as soon as this button is pressed and acknowledged, okay, the alarm goes away. And let's jump back for a second here now. 
now you see that it was acknowledged. So I know that, okay, mom is up. She saw the message and she did acknowledge it. Okay, music, you can search for, um, here I searched for Frank Sinatra, uh, select which, these are playlists from YouTube. Okay, here you're seeing a little snippet of it. You click play and it'll start playing on the day clock. Check in, you can choose which clock you want to check in. Check in is a two-way video and voice calling. So um, you just check in and it'll start a video call to that clock. And documents where you can upload some important documents. It could be a medication list. It could be a, um, uh, a schedule of doctor's visits. It could be a hospital report. So this is great for uh, sharing internally bef between family members, or uh, you can then say the visiting nurse is there and wants to see the current medication list. You can say, okay, show that, and it pushes it out to the day clock. Uh, they don't have access to it. They can't save it, but they'll be able to see it, and then you can go ahead and hide that again. Okay. Um, let's just go to all here. Uh, you could scroll down, see just some different types of messages. How are you today? Just checking in, uh, looking forward to dinner. So people use it for all kinds of messages, reminders, uh, time for evening meds with picture of the medication. So really a lot of use here. Um, it's also very friendly for uh, kids. So encouraging intergenerational communication between grandkids. Um, and you can also back to the menu invite. And this is where you would type in the email of someone else in your family that you want to invite to the same account. And then everyone would see the same information, be able to share and send their own information, schedule the day clocks as well. So this was a really quick overview. Again, each of these features has their own videos uh, on the YouTube channel. You can go in and see more information about how that works. Thank you for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to visit us at allhomecarematters.com where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions, every form is read and responded to. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms or watch the show on our official YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We'd also like to extend our appreciation to Danny Waxman of Recall Q for joining us today here at All Home Care Matters. Thank you so Thank much you for joining us today. To you again. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.